morning. Amen. Got an interesting topic this morning. Yeah. Yeah. But if you, uh, you understand uh, by the end of the message what uh, the ancestors have given me to give to you, uh, don't be disheartened. You can still call your ancestors. <laughs> But there are some things that uh, we want to uh, go through uh, in regards to Pentecost and in regards to the disciples' relationship uh, with Jesus after his death and, and the ongoing mission, which uh, Sister Shikesha will really follow up on as she talks about the early Christian church next week. Mm, well. uh, but as was mentioned, our topic is a message from the ancestors, don't call us, we'll call you. Amen. Mm -hmm. And uh, before, I, before I begin, uh, you know how folks come up to you and say, uh, how you doing, how you feel? Mm -hmm. uh, I have to apologize to the old Tunji and Iran group. I say, yeah, I'm all right. Uh, but I'm not totally all right. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, just before I went downstairs, got a call that my great aunt. Uh, we we're going to celebrate her birthday next month. Uh, she and my mother, though years apart, were thought to be twins. She would be 101 years old. Uh, so uh, she's all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get right. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. The murdering of the black Messiah Jesus left a growing movement in turmoil and crisis. Mm -hmm. Under the leadership, the ministry, and mission of restoring the black nation Israel to a position of self-rule was done programmatically and skillfully. Jesus and the disciples spent significant time outside of the power uh, center of Jerusalem. Well, They were busy cultivating a nationalistic mentality. Jesus, the black Messiah, knew that before they could re realistically throw off Roman rule, they, in fact, would first have to love and believe in one another as a people. Well, building a kingdom of heaven, i.e., an independent nation on earth, meant building positive relations with one another. Well, in his absence, what would they, the disciples, say and do? As we traveled through the season of Lent <clears throat> and we finished up with Resurrection Sunday. We now have a group of people confused and dismayed. All right. As with anyone who has lost someone, i.e. a loved one, grief is unescapable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I can get someone to read uh, point one for me. Once you suffer the loss of someone close or that you hold in deep admiration, the pain is unexplainable. So it must have been for the disciples of Jesus. Once gone, those left behind have only memories and visual, visualizations to keep that person alive in their heart and mind. The practice of ancestor recognition or worship is a way to continue that relationship. Mm -hmm. As a group, and as individuals, the disciples went through some of the basics of a grieving process. And you can see some of that as outlined in your handout, The Grief Cycle by Kugler Ross. Denial, anger, depression, bargaining, acceptance. A lot of times you are in denial in various forms, avoidance, confusion elation, shock, or fear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You may keep that phone message of the loved one's voice on your phone. You may just keep their room exactly how it was when they passed away. Mm 
in denial. <clears throat> Anger, frustration, anxiety, irritation. You just don't know what, but everything anybody says or wants to say to you, it just gets on your nerves. Your whole life is out of skelter. You're off balance and nothing is going or seems to be going your way. So you just lash out in anger for no particular reason. Then there's depression, where you're just overwhelmed and feeling helpless. Hostility and you want to flee. You may become recluse, or you may sit down in the basement like I might do, put on a little jazz and take a glass of scotch. And then, there's bargaining. You begin to find meaning. You begin to reach out. You may find a support group to work with you to get over the feelings that you have, or it might be a close friend. Amen. And at some point, Amen. you accept the reality, and you begin to explore options and begin to come up with another plan of action. What can I do to honor that person? For many, sometimes, especially like if it's cancer or some disease, you start a foundation That's right. to get others aware. Mm -hmm. You become involved. Or you remember that loved one and you try to complete the task mm -hmm. that you talked about with them. Wow. Mm -hmm. Though seeing the crucifixion, they could not cope with the reality of the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. What did the two say as they walked on the way to the town of Emmaus? In Luke 23, verse 17 and verse 21, it states, They stopped short, their faces downcast. Our hope had been that he would be the one to set Israel free. My Lord. Not save us and go to prepare a big mansion in the sky. Mm -hmm. Not wash our sins away and make us white as snow. We thought he would be the one to get these Romans off our back. Yes. Well. We thought he was going to be a liberator and a great king like his ancestor, King David. Mm -hmm. We thought he would free the people. Mm -hmm. Now, they find themselves in denial of who was this man really. Mm -hmm. They are in denial, how could Jesus, the black Messiah, be dead after all of the fulfillments of the prophecies, right. the scriptures, where he had been completing them, born through the lineage of David, coming out of Egypt. While not documented, you can imagine the anger and frustration that the disciples had, especially at Judas, the betrayer, right. mm -hmm. who they eventually had killed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In a state of depression and despondent, they were absent from teaching and preaching in the streets. Yeah. They were low-key trying not to attract the attention of the Roman troops. Right. Mm -hmm. This movement seemed dead, and so would they be if they were not careful. Mm -hmm. But then the cycle of grief begins an upswing. Mm -hmm. They begin to find strength in one another as they regroup near the celebration of weeks. They began to remember their now ancestor Jesus, the black Messiah, and what he talked about, what he preached about, the power he manifested. And as they recalled the mission and purpose of Jesus, who has passed on into the ancestral realm, they themselves began to find new life. They accept finally, the reality of the passing of the black Messiah Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With this acceptance, coupled with revisiting why they followed this man, they are now ready to get back on track. They are ready to continue the mission. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Can I get someone to read point two for me, please? <clears throat> when you set your mind to do the thing, I'm sorry, when you set your mind to do the same thing that you hold your ancestors in high esteem for, they will call on you and give you strength and power as was evident at Pentecost. Mm -hmm. A basic blueprint for success would be, would be to see what made a person successful and then follow 
those processes they engaged in. The old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, is a truthism. Putting in the learning time and studying time as Jesus did, the reception of the power of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost should not be earth shattering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus, the black Messiah, knew what the disciples were going to be going through. But he also knew that if he trained them right, they would, in fact, be all right. Amen. 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 Acknowledgement of those held in high regard is universal. Mm -hmm. Various societies and cultures worldwide each have their particular way of holding on to and not letting go of loved ones or men and women that have impacted their lives personally or their society in particular. Each culture defines how they should know and how they should show acknowledgement to those who have passed. There is no specific universal way to honor or contact the ancestors. Mm -hmm. But we want to just kind of touch base and review some in various countries. In Egypt, for example, death was not the sole criteria for being worshipped as an ancestor. The person must have lived a moral life with great social distinction in order to attain that status. Mm -hmm. Ancestors were believed to influence the lives of later generations by blessing or cursing them, in essence acting as gods. Kind of sounds like the covenant relation of the black nation Israel and God, am I right? Mm -hmm. yeah. For this reason, ancestor veneration in ancient Egypt was an important rite of remembrance in order to keep the person alive in this life as well as the next. Royals, nobles, and the wealthy, they made contracts with their local priests to perform prayers and give offerings at their tombs. In return, the priests would keep a little portion for themselves. Some tomb inscriptions were on invited passersby to speak out loud the names of the deceased within the tomb mm -hmm. to help perpetuate their memories. Mm -hmm. In the private homes of those less wealthy, niches were carved in the walls of, for the purpose of housing images of family and to serve as altars of veneration. <clears throat> if we look in China, in China, in the home of ordinary citizens, they would have a dedicated room where inscribed wooden tablets were set up which recorded the names, genealogy, and achievements of the most important male and some female ancestors. Mm -hmm. Where there was more than one son, the elder son would keep the tablets in the home. Only three generations of ancestors were generally worshipped. The oldest tablets were periodically taken and burned or buried at the grave site of the individual mentioned on the tablet. In this example, we also can see that in some societies, they treat the ancestor, ancestral world as they would do their own real world, giving special attention to males or elderly if that is, in fact, the mores of that culture. Another group of ancestors who received particular worship were those founders and those deceased senior figures belonging to the group. In India, for example, a small feast was done of specific preparations and it was made eligible to the deceased priest. Only after these rituals are done are the family members allowed to eat. Mm. It is believed that this reminds the ancestral spirits that they are not forgotten and are loved, so it brings them peace. On ritual days, people pray that the souls of the ancestors be appeased, yeah. forget any animosity, and find peace. Mm -hmm. Each year on the particular day when that person died, the family members would repeat that ritual. Mm -hmm. Get someone to read point four for me, if you would. 
Traditional African people believed that you could only become an ancestor if you lived a good life, because ancestors were to give spiritual guidance. To simply die is not a qualifier to be an ancestor. Mm -hmm. Calling someone an ancestor should be based on the type of life they lived, and if it impacted others in a positive manner. Mm -hmm. Guidance that we receive from our ancestors is based on memory recall. We remember their sayings. We remember their responses to likes and dislikes. Mm -hmm. These remembrances are in fact them calling out to our these remembrances are in fact them calling out to or communicating with us at various times and during various situations in our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, Slick Red is not going to be in the ancestors. <laughs> <laughs> Big Mama Beatrice selling homebrew out the back door is not going to be in the ancestor realm. Amen. Though she may be sweet as pie. Mm -hmm. It's a reserved realm for those that have worked for the best interests of their people All right. and immediate loved ones. Well. Many of the major characters in the Bible are revered because of the dedication and commitment they had for making a better life for their people. Well, From Abraham to Jesus, members of the black nation would refer to their exploits and commitment to God. The quote-unquote great characters of the Bible were in the forefront of confrontation. Mm -hmm. They valued saying what was right as defined by their history. They are valued in their depths because they valued the traditions and laws as established by those that came before them. Mm -hmm. Moses is referred to time and time again by members of the black nation Israel. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Because of what he did. Mm -hmm. We know inside and out the journey. He led them out of Egypt across the Red Sea. That's right. Into the wilderness and up to the border of the promised land. But how is it that he did what he did? He was called by God. He was reminded of the covenant promise made by his ancestors. His line of communication is evident when he couldn't stand seeing a fellow member of the nation Israel being beaten by an Egyptian. The ancestral spirit would not let him not act. Amen. The empathy for one's people is, in fact, a call from the ancestors. Amen. When you display a concern, a righteous indignation as it regards the sad state of affairs of your people, guess what? What? Ring, ring, ancestors <laughs> call. When you wake up troubled, to your bones because of something you heard or saw and it doesn't support a positive self-image of black people, then our ancestor is calling you. Well. Mm -hmm. See if uh, you remember, hope that this thing is working right today, this newscast. But as you can see, this is about the church burnings in Louisiana. So I just let it run a little bit since the volume's not working. But we all heard about that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three churches in about 10 days, I think it was, burned in Louisiana. When you heard that, how did you feel? When you heard that, were you mad and upset? When you heard that, did you think about the five little girls that were bombed in Alabama? If you felt some kind of remorse, some kind of anger, some kind of discontent, then the ancestors we're calling you. We studied 
about David. We studied about David and how he was ordained to be leadership. He carried a tenacity to stand up for his people. It didn't matter how big a person or a group was. You don't mess with the people of God. The spirit of Moses, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was in him and wouldn't allow intimidation by the Philistines. Fulfillment of the covenant faith as taught by those who came before him gave him the strength and confidence to overcome seemingly unsurmountable odds. When you are challenged, strength will come to you. For those football folks, Shagai Kanata. <laughs> you saw the NFL draft. Mm -hmm. You know there were some amazing, amazing stories of young black boys finding the strength to be men. One in particular was about a young brother that had lost his mother before he had went to college. And with tears in his eyes, he was telling reporters and describing how on many, many occasions that he wanted to quit the rigors and demands of being a college athlete. But during those times, he said, he remembered hearing his mother's voice. Mm -hmm. mm, boy, <laughs> you got to take care of your brothers and sisters. It's mm -hmm. an ancestor calling you. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. In Psalms, when the writer laments, how can we sing the songs of Zion in a foreign land? That's ancestors of the nation Israel calling out and speaking out through them. Mm -hmm. There can be no joy, no laughter, as long as we are separated from the land that the ancestors had given us. Mm -hmm. The disciples were given specific instructions. Stay in the city, then, until you are clothed with the power from on high. Amen. Understanding when we are being called on by an ancestor is often difficult to hear. Mm -hmm. It takes, at times, reflection and prayer to hear and feel their presence. At other times, in ritual dance and chants, the power comes. Once it does come, as an individual, we find ourselves performing at a rate higher than we ever, ever thought possible. Amen. You study, plan, and prepare. That's what Jesus was getting the disciples to do. Study, plan, and prepare, and the power and spirit of the prophets, the great kings and leaders of the black nation Israel, and yes, the spirit of Jesus himself, will come to you. This was the message to the disciples before Pentecost. Mm -hmm. You will be empowered because you have not deserted the movement of those that have come before you. Amen. Right. Amen. The power will come from on high. Mm -hmm. As they began to re-engage the task of nation building, it was done in the name of Jesus, the black Messiah. Mm -hmm. In Acts 3, the people challenged Peter's ability to heal. After reading them up and down as to how they had rejected Jesus, Peter goes on in verse 25 to let them know that they have the same potential because of their ancestry. Amen. It reads, ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Mm -hmm. Peter and others in the circle of the disciples knew the power to heal, to preach, to give hope came from the power and belief in God and the spirit of Jesus the black Messiah and all Amen. of the leaders of old. Amen. In Acts 4, verse 10, 
Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus the Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth the man stand here before you. Most every act of healing and upliftment done by Peter and the disciples was done with the verbal pronouncement that this is done in the name of Jesus. Calling on the power that resides in the energy field. As black Christian nationalists, what is our relation to the ancestors? Mm -hmm. I get someone to read point seven for me. <clears throat> we as BCN believers in a universe of cosmic energy, which we refer to as God. As a result, we are interconnected with this cosmic field that is around us and in us. One would have to conclude that as we leave this human form, we and our ancestors continue to exist in a different realm of this energy field. <laughs> our ancestors are all around us and in us. In this very room, Cardinal Olu is with us. <laughs> In this very room, Reverend Anduele is with us. Yeah. And guess what? At any particular point in time of the day, they or others are calling out to us. Who are our ancestors? We call on them every Sunday, every first Sunday at the Sacrament of Commitment. Who do you call and why? Let me hear from you. Who do you call on first Sunday and why? Anybody? I always call uh, Jim Sai because the inspiration was to me. Um, I became a part of the Maccabees a lot out of who he was and what it stood for. And uh, I feel like when I call him, I'm reinforcing that faith and that belief in our possibility of securing a nation. Show me that, man. I have my own. Mine was uh, Estella Grant and Bertha Hurd. And a lot of why I found the church was because I continually just was certain, was looking for something that had a conception of what I think that people should see God for. Ills trying to be about the business of making the world and what it be for poor black people and, and somebody talking about other than just themselves and be about trying to make the world what they need to make it do. So I'm, I mean... Anybody else? <clears throat> um, because I don't have the closeness to my children, I, I often I call on my late wife to continue to watch over them, you know, and, and sort of, you know, make sure they're doing the right thing and guide them and lead them and, you know, so forth and so on, you know. So, um, you know, once the kids are straight, they're straight, you know. <laughs> so that's what I call on her. Okay, um, uh, Jack Roman. Yeah, I just wanted to know, um, this is a question, not going to go call on. Is it only the ancestors that you are familiar with you can call on for assistance, or you can just call on ancestors that were past the time we existed? Because there are ancestors I don't know, my family, who I think have my interest, but I never knew them personally. So if I call on them, would I get a response? Because they don't know me personally. But, so I just want to ask that question. Yeah, well, I, I'm probably going to touch on it a little bit as I go down, but the uh, quick answer is yes. I always call Gerald dear baby. I mean, you had mentioned in there about we have all of this information that has been left. We have the Black Messiah. We have Black Christian nationalism, and people say, "Oh, I've read that." It's, it's not a reading; it's a lifestyle. And uh, uh, the only memories I really have of only sitting in one group reading with him. So 
the writings that he, he the things that he communicated when he was in the pool with that. Um, the same with the disciples of Jesus is to follow these things. Jesus has this quote that says, why call me Lord, Lord, and don't do what I say? Or do the things that I do. And so there have been many things that have been left. I think that's initiated in my life that I need to be doing it and understand. So it's always uh, the founder. Last one. I, um, Go ahead. I call on my grandmother, Amanda Smith, and my mother. Because being a grandmother, she set some standards that, I mean, it was never a time that I needed it in anything and she wasn't there. I remember all the sacrifices and all that she did for us as children. And so I have, my, my memories of my grandmother was how strong she was. And my mother spoiled all of our children. So just being a grandmother and being those, that kind of example is, I want my grandchildren to have those same kind of memories. So in essence, everyone is pretty much saying that the people that they call on, right. they call on because of the life that they lived. Yes. Amen. The inspiration that they gave them. Amen. All this is good and definitely necessary. We call on them, but why do we call on them? As we mentioned, to give them strength, to struggle. Amen. Are we really struggling to the point, though, that an ancestor would come to support us? Yeah. Now, I'm just going to be frank. Yeah. When I become an ancestor, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be a picky ancestor. Who you going to come to? When it comes to answering some call. <laughs> and I feel that many of our current ancestors feel the same way. Look at what some of our current ancestors have done. Jeremoji, a race man, a black nationalist, mm -hmm. a thorn in the side of traditional Christian beliefs. Amanifu, a relentless community activist. Cardinal Nandi, a perpetual ball of energetic support for black artists in all types of venues, and a businesswoman extraordinaire. Mm -hmm. So if you called on Jeremoji to give you strength to get along with my white co-workers that are continually to dog me out, <laughs> they're passing me by on promotions, not recognizing my accomplishments, I'm on I guarantee you he will send you this message. Don't call us. We'll call you. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> what about Cardinal Amanifu? What would he say if you called out to him to help you get some of these bills off your back? <laughs> so I can clear my credit and move out to Woodstock next to rich white folks. <laughs> you know the response. <laughs> well. Don't call me with all that mess. I'll get back to you. <laughs> Finally, and this is for real. This is for real. General Masai, one dedicated to protecting the nation from enemies inside and outside the nation. He and others minimized the need to be on the defensive by going on the offensive as needed to neutralize nation threats. Mm -hmm. Now, what would a BCN ancestor such as that say? If you called out to them, can you please help me find my lost pet? <laughs> they ain't answering that call. <laughs> Don't call us for that. We'll call you later on down the line. Mm -hmm. me. In the agenda of an ancestor, if the agenda of an ancestor was to serve and work in the interest of black people, then to call them to help you do something less then that is an insult and an act of irreverence. Mm -hmm. Jesus' mission was to rededicate and move his people to a point of freedom and liberation. When the disciples rededicated themselves to that mission, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, 
gave them the power to do what was needed to be done in order to establish the early Christian church. Amen. So what is it our ancestors would have us do? I would imagine they would have us do the same things that they sought to do when they were here physically with us. It's time to repair the damage, brothers and sisters. The Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church seeks to repair the damage that has been done to black people. We need brothers and sisters who are willing to let their lives be transformed so they can become effective agents for God to go into the world and to save our people. I was listening yesterday to Barry White was on TV and he was talking about how he was this rare exception that came out of the black community. Then all the brothers and sisters from his community were on drugs and getting killed and in gangs and everything else. But it's interesting that whenever they get a black man that they say is successful, they go back into his community with news cameras and stuff showing the, the dilapidated houses, the rundown community, brothers and sisters on drugs, people hanging out, people walking around with no clothes on, and they're yeah, look what I got away from. I know you may feel to a certain degree that that's a, that's a sense of success, but have you really escaped it? If you have a sense of being one with your people, can you think that you have escaped it while your people lie in waste? And then when it comes down to somebody trying to figure out to whom are you connected, where do you stand? Have you escaped it? I mean, you look at it, but most of you in here, most of us in here, quote unquote, superficially successful. I mean, you can pay your rent at times. You can drive, you drive a car, and if not, you can catch the bus. Most not on assistance. Wish you could be, because you remember when you were, life was a lot easier. But you educated, been to Texas Southern, now you may gonna be ashamed of that, because Bill Harvey said, not only should it be closed now, it should have been closed 20 years ago, and some of y'all graduated from Texas Southern mm -hmm. 20 years ago. The white man now talking about the institution, black institute, but doesn't make you kind of feel kind of ashamed. You won't necessarily want to go there. But there's a whole sense of shame about being black. But see, that damage has to be repaired because we cannot save black people if the majority of black people are walking around feeling ashamed of who we are. The pan African Orthodox Christian Church, though, moves to save black people by making us recognize that we do feel shame. Our shame is based upon our acceptance of the myth of black inferiority. That through those 400 years where that 100 million of us died, it was impacted upon us that something was inferior about black people. Our condition was inferior, and everything was done to reinforce that it was a reality. It wasn't real. Black people are not inferior to anybody. On a genetic basis, news theories even show that black people are genetically superior. We have superior ability. But do we use it? Do we, do we exhibit it? Do we, do we express it? And as long as we are tying ourselves to the coattail of our oppressor, we will never do anything for ourselves. But the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church then brings us to the reality that each of us has been affected by the psychological state out of which black people had to exist. That we all feel a sense of shame. But that's not the way God intended it for us to be. That we then have to come back to God. And the only way to come back to God is to come and be a part of a group of people that are working for God to transform the world. In other words, our church then is a healing church. It's a healing church that takes you in and rebuilds you, restructures. Some people say at the shrine they brainwash you. We say that's true, we do. We brainwash you. What we brainwash, what we try to take out is not the inner divinity, because we can't take that out. We want that to come out, to, to shine. But what we take out is the nigga. You understand? We take the nigga out of you. Just like we said in the little commercial where Schick says they will save you from your alcohol, we will shave you from your niggerization. We will save you from your feelings of hopelessness. We will save you from your feelings of helplessness. We will save you from your feelings of despair. We will save you from those feelings of, of hostility and loneliness and all those things that are destroying you on the inside. 
and reshape you to be what God created you to be. But the, your responsibility is once your light starts to come on, you got to take it into the world so other black people can see it. A lot of damage has been done to black people. But right now, we need workmen. We need tools. God needs tools. God needs a means by which the damage done to black people can be repaired so that black people can have a future. In the Pan African Orthodox Christian Church, we are the tool of God. That's why we are different. People say, at the shrine, they are different. We are not ashamed of being different. At the shrine, y'all black. We are not ashamed of being black. We are not ashamed of what we are. We are not ashamed. Y'all got that funny name, Pan African. We are not ashamed of being an African people. Why is it so African? Because we are an African people. People like say Pan American say, no, 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 don't make a mistake, don't confuse it. It is not a, a typographical error. It is not, it is not a, some mistake. We are an African people. And that's why our church is called the Pan African Orthodox Christian Church. We are Christian people. We are African people who respect our African genetic history. We are African people who respect our people. We are African people that respect the fact that God made us black. And we are African people that are going to change the world for black people and save our people from the wretchedness of the world. But it takes brothers and sisters that have that same sense of kindness. Otherwise, when you come to our church, we want to help you. Yeah, we ain't trying to say, you know, we know that you lived wrong because we've had the same life. But in this church, we want to help you. But we want to help you so that you can help our people. We, the only reason we want to help you is because we love our people. That means we love you. That means we love you, we care for you, got a deep feeling inside for you. And we want you to change so that our people can change. It saddens and it hurts us to see our people die. You may be able to watch the news and watch the Rogue's Journal and watch the, 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 the police this and police that and see all them black faces and watch black people dying. You may be able to sit there and watch the deterioration of our communities. Sit there and listen to the statistics that say that black babies in, in Houston, Texas, infant mortality is greater than third world countries where they can't get inoculations. You may be able to stand that, but we can't stand it. We can't put up with it. You may, be able to, you may be able to sit there and say, it doesn't make a difference that black children are being miseducated. We can't stand it. God has given us a mission to go in and save our people, to change black people. You may be able to stand the way that you are. We can't. You may say, it's all right, baby, nigga. We say, no, it ain't. And we're going to do everything we can to help you come out of your niggerized state. We don't like you walking around feeling that you got to be bowing down and coattailing the white people. No, that's not what we want for you. That's not what God wanted for you. God wants us to have a nation of our own. A power to control and define our own human destiny. We need jobs, then let's build them for ourselves. We need schools, let's build them for ourselves. We need hospitals, let's build them for ourselves. We need food, let's grow it ourselves. We can take care of ourselves. And no. Inside, some kind of way, those ideas like that, that's foreign to me. That's the nigga in you. But if you let's let us in, let it in, let the power of God start to shine in you, you will say, I wonder why I ain't been thinking about growing our own all along. I wonder why I ain't been thinking about having our own all along. It's in you. You guys say, let us help you bring it out. God could use you. It ain't by mistake that you're here this morning. All these different churches you could have been there's a black church on every street corner in this city. But some kind of way you show up in this black church with these black people sitting here in uniform, unified, oneness of heart, an African church, black Jesus upon the wall, rising sun above the Africa. It ain't a mistake that you're here. God got some work for you. God got some work for you. God got something for you to do. You know why? Because God knows a whole lot of sheep out there. And God said, we need some shepherds. Many are called, few are chosen. They're all over the place. But the chosen are here. And guess what? You here with us. You one of the chosen, but you got to come in and get it together. You ain't ready. It's inside you. We got to prepare you.
we're not doing what our ancestors gave their life to doing. Their message is simply, don't call them. They'll call you. <laughs> <laughs>